Hello my dear students. This lecture is about the autonomic nervous system motor part that is the general visual efferent component. First, I'll introduce you about its two deviants, sympathetic deviant and a parasympathetic deviant. How these two deviants will work in different environments in different conditions. And then I'll talk about the basic chemistry of the neurons that perform this function. A pre learning neuron and a post learning neuron. Students, the autonomic nervous system has got many tricky and difficult concepts. I'll teach in a way that first I'll talk about the simple concepts and then I'll move to the advanced concepts. Note down the important concept that we will cover in this lecture. I'll talk about the outflow of the autonomic nervous system and then the ganglia in the form of the synthetic chain, in the form of the cranial parasympathetic ganglia and the collateral ganglia. In the autonomic nervous system, I'll teach you what is the concept of the vitro micromunicantes and the gray micromunicantes. I'll teach you the concept of the subplastic nerves and how they form plexus in the abdomen and the pelvis, especially the hypogastric plexus. So let's start our lecture now. First of all, I'll talk about the classification of the nervous system. The detail of this classification is given in my first two lectures. So nervous system is functionally divided into a somatic nervous system or the voluntary nervous system and the visceral nervous system that is also known as the involuntary nervous system or the autonomic nervous system. Each of the somatic nervous system and the visual nervous system will have afferent deviation as well as the efferent deviation, sensory component and a motor component. The sensory component of the somatic nervous system is about the exterior receptors that is present in the skin and this component is you know known as the general somatic afferent component. Motor component of the somatic nervous system is about the voluntary factor that is the skeletal muscle and this component is known as the general somatic efferent component. The sensory component of the visual nervous system is about the interior receptor that is mostly present in the mucosa and this component is known as the general visual afferent component. The motor component of the visual nervous system is about the involuntary factor that include smooth muscle, cortic muscle and the glands and this component is known as the general visual efferent component. Today we will talk about this component in detail about its basics, about its basic neurons and the advanced concepts. So before going further you should be clear about the effectors of the general visual efferent component and these effectors are the involuntary factors that include cardiac muscle, smooth muscle and the glands. Cardiac muscle is present in the thorax in our heart while the smooth muscle and the glands are present inside the body as well as outside the body. Inside the body means in the thorax we have got the lungs in the abdomen, we have got the digestive tract that is the foregut, midgut and the hindgut. In the pelvis, we have got the urinary bladder, we have got the uterus and we have got the glands. And outside the trunk, we have got the body wall and we have got the skin. And here, we have got the involuntary factors in the form of blood vessels, in the form of flexor pili, smooth muscles and the sweat glands that are present in the skin. In short, in simple words, we can say that wherever in the body, we have got smooth muscle, or we have got glands. This is the visera, and this visera will be supplied by the general visceral efferent component. The neurons of the general visceral efferent component will target all these visera. And in this lecture, I show you how general visceral efferent neurons will reach all these targets. Now, the neuronal composition of the general visceral efferent component. This component consists of two neurons. First neuron is present in the central nervous system. From here, this neuron will move out and it will reach the peripheral nervous system where it will synapse with the second neuron and the second neuron will reach the destination that is a visera, which can be cardiac muscle, smooth muscle or a gland. Involuntary effectors. Keep in mind, this is the key diagram to understand the general visceral efferent component, to understand the autonomic nervous system. So I will repeat, we have got two neurons. First neuron is the pre ganglionic neuron that is present in the central nervous system. This will move out and will synapse with the post ganglionic neuron that is present in the peripheral nervous system. And post ganglionic neuron will be the target that is a visera. 
So we can say that there is no third neuron in the general visceral efferent component. It consists of two neurons. Or we can also say that we have got only one synapse between two neurons. We have one synapse in the general visceral efferent component that is present in the peripheral nervous system. And this synapse is known as the ganglia. Before synapse, we have got the preganglionic neuron or the presynaptic neuron. And after synapse, we have got the postganglionic neuron or the postsynaptic neuron. So this is the crucial diagram showing us the basic composition of the neurons that form the general visceral efferent component. Now I'll show you where in the central nervous system we have got the preganglionic neuronal cell bodies. You know, central nervous system consists of brain and the spinal cord. In the brain, the preganglionic neuronal cell bodies are present in the brain stem. Here in the brain stem, we have got the preganglionic neuronal cell bodies. They move out of the central nervous system. And in the spinal cord, you know, the neuronal cell bodies are present in the gray matter. And gray matter is in the form of the dorsal horn and the ventral horn. For the cell bodies of the preganglionic neurons in the spinal cord, we have got an extra horn that is present between the dorsal and the ventral horns. And this horn is known as the intermediate horn. Or also known as the intermediate lateral horn, abbreviated as IML. Here in the intermediate lateral horn, we have the neuronal cell body of the preganglionic neuron and it will move out of the spinal cord. So this is about the location of the preganglionic neurons in the central nervous system. Now coming to the location of the postganglionic neuron in the peripheral nervous system. You know, when we've got a neuronal cell body in the peripheral nervous system, we name it as a ganglia. And the ganglia can be a false ganglia, and it can be a true ganglia. When neuronal cell bodies are present with synapse, this collection of the neuronal cell body is known as the true ganglia. And when neuronal cell bodies are present without synapse, we name these as the false ganglia. So in the general visual different component, postganglionic neuron is present in the form of a true ganglia. All the ganglia in the general visual efferent component are true ganglia. No doubt. Now I'll talk about the modes of the general visual efferent component, modes of the autonomic nervous system or the response of the autonomic nervous system. It is of two types. It depends upon the situation in which we are. If we are in a peaceful condition, we will have a parasympathetic response. And if we are in a situation of crisis, in a situation of stress or emergency, we will have a sympathetic response. The reason behind this division is that we want our effectors to work differently in these two situations. I will now briefly describe how these two responses are different from each other. So first the parasympathetic response that is in the peaceful conditions and is also known as the rest and digest phase. In this phase, we activate the gut system and the urinary system for the normal vegetative functions that is digestion and absorption. There will be peristalsis and we will have relaxation of the sphincters for the defecation and the urination. So the GIT and the urinary system will be stimulated and the respiratory system and the heart. These two will work normally at a regular pace and a regular rhythm. And now the sympathetic response. That is about the crisis situation, also known as fight and flight. In this situation, we have to run and for this purpose, we want more blood in our limbs so that skeletal muscles should work. So in the limbs, we have got the blood vessels made up of smooth muscles and blood vessels will dilate and will carry more blood to the skeletal muscles of the limbs. And we want our gut system and our urinary system to shut down. So these two systems will be shut down. There will be no parastalsis and the sphincters will be contracted. And in the respiration, we want more breathing. Respiratory system will be activated. The air tubes will be dilated and glands in the respiratory tubes will be inhibited. And heart, we will activate the cardiac muscle. So the frequency and force of contraction will increase. So we will have more blood in our circulation that will help in running. So these are some very basic responses. How the visera behaves in the parasympathetic phase and how the visera behaves in the sympathetic phase. Note down all these responses. 
Now I'll talk about the outflow of the autonomic nervous system. First, the outflow of the sympathetic nervous system. What does outflow mean? Outflow means where is the preganglionic neuron in the CNS. And for sympathetic nervous system, preganglionic neurons are present in the spinal cord. And you know, spinal cord has got cervical segment that are 7. Spinal cord has got thoracic segment that are 12. It has got lumbar and sacral segments that are 5 each. And in the end, it has got the coccygeal segments. The preganglionic neuron for the sympathetic nervous system is coming from 12 thoracic segment and first two lumbar segment. The total of the 14 spinal cord segment will give rise to the sympathetic nervous system for whole body. We name this outflow as the thoracolumbar. Thoraco means thoracic segments and lumbar means two lumbar segments. But where in the segment? This I have already told you that intermedial lateral horn will have the preganglionic neuron in each segment. From here the neuron will move out, it will synapse with the postganglionic neuron outside the central system and postganglionic neuron will reach the target that is the visera. Look at here, we have got a neuronal cell body with synapse, so it is a true ganglia. True ganglia of the sympathetic system and it is of two categories, either it is paravertebral chain of the ganglia or it is prevertebral chain of the ganglia. Let me demonstrate these two categories of ganglia here. What does paravertebral and prevertebral means? So from intermedial lateral horn, the preganglionic neuron will emerge and it will move out here. It will synapse with the postganglionic neuron and postganglionic neuron will read the visera. Likewise, on the other side, we will have a preganglionic neuron. It will synapse here and postganglionic neuron will read the visera. So you can see that we have got ganglia on both sides of the vertebra. This vertebral ganglia will make a chain and we will name this as the paravertebral chain of ganglia. Second option for the preganglionic neuron is to come in front of the vertebra. Here they will synapse with the second neuron and second neuron will read the visera. So we will have a collection of the ganglia in front of the vertebra and we will name this group as the prevertebral group of ganglia. These prevertebral group of ganglia are present only in the abdomen. While paravertebral chain of the ganglia is present throughout the vertebral column. Now I'll talk about the outflow of the parasympathetic nervous system and outflow mean where is the preganglionic neuron. The outflow of the parasympathetic nervous system is known as craniosacral. Cranio means the cranial nerves and sacral means the sacral segment of the spinal cord. The cranial nerve that perform the function of the parasympathetic nervous system are cranial nerve number 3, 7, 9 and 10. While the sacral segments that perform this function are sacral segment number S2, S3 and S4. The preganglionic neurons related with the cranial nerve number 3, 7, 9 and 10 is present in the brainstem while the preganglionic neurons of the sacral segment is present in the intermedial lateral horn of the spinal cord. From here these neurons will move out and will synapse with the second neuron that is the postganglionic neuron and we name these cell bodies as the true ganglia, true ganglia of the parasympathetic nervous system. No doubt the ganglia of the parasympathetic nervous system has got two categories, cranial parasympathetic ganglia and the peripheral parasympathetic ganglia. The postganglionic neurons of cranial nerve number 3, 7 and 9 will be present in the cranial region and will supply the visera of the cranial region only. So we will have cranial parasympathetic ganglia and the cranial parasympathetic ganglia are 4 in number. While the vagus nerve will move out of the cranial region, it will supply the visera of the thorax, then it will supply the visera of the abdomen, foregut and the midgut. After the midgut, we have got hindgut. The visera of the hindgut will be supplied by the sacral segments and visera present in the pelvis like urinary bladder, uterus will also be supplied by the sacral segments. So in this way, we will have four cranial parasympathetic ganglia present in the head and face area and we will have peripheral parasympathetic ganglia outside the cranial region that are countless. So this is all about the general visual efferent component basics. 
that is consists of two neurons first is present in the central nervous system second is present in the peripheral nervous system and the general visual efferent component has got two modes two divisions sympathetic and the parasympathetic sympathetic division works in the crisis condition and parasympathetic division works in the peaceful conditions the outflow of the sympathetic nervous system is the thoracolumbar outflow and the outflow of the parasympathetic nervous system is the craniosacral outflow now i'll talk about the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division in detail the outflow of the parasympathetic division is craniosacral cranio mean cranial nerve number 3 7 9 and 10 we will have the preganglionic neurons in the brain stem For third nerve, the preganglionic neuron is known as the Edinger-Westphal nucleus. For seventh nerve, the nucleus, the preganglionic neuron is known as the superior salivatory nucleus. For ninth nerve, the nucleus is known as the inferior salivatory nucleus. The preganglionic neuron is known as the inferior salivatory nucleus. And for tenth nerve, the preganglionic neuron is known as the dorsal vagus nucleus all these are present in the brain stem among these nerves cranial nerve number 3 7 and 9 will supply the visra present in the cranial region we have got visra in the eyeball we have got visra in the oral cavity nasal cavity pharynx and the larynx so the preganglionic neuron related with the third nerve will move out of the brain and will reach the orbit here it will synapse with the second neuron that will supply visra inside the eyeball inside the eyeball we have got involute tree effectors that are the smooth muscles like dilateral pupillary muscle sphincter pupillary muscle and gland that secrete fluid inside the chambers this ganglia that is present in the orbit is known as the ciliary ganglia the preganglionic neuron from the seventh nerve will move out of the brain and will reach the oral cavity here it will synapse with the second neuron and second neuron will supply the salivary gland that is the sublingual salivary gland and the submandibular salivary gland and this ganglia that is present in the oral cavity is known as the submandibular ganglia the preganglionic neuron related with the ninth nerve will move out of the brain and will reach the infratemporal fossa here it will synapse with second neuron the second neuron will supply the salivary gland that is the parotid gland and this ganglia in the infratemporal fossa is known as the otic ganglia the preganglionic neuron from seventh nerve will also go to the trigepalatine fossa here it will synapse with second neuron and we will have a ganglia here this ganglia is known as the trigepalatine ganglia present in the trigepalatine fossa the fibers from the trigepalatine ganglia will supply all the visra that is not supplied by the ciliary ganglia that is not supplied by the submandibular ganglia and that is not supplied by the otic ganglia no doubt all the remaining visra of the cranial region that is not supplied by these three i will write all minus 3 so all minus 3 will be supplied by fibers from the trigepalatine ganglia so i will repeat here we will have got the cranial nerve 3 7 9 and 10 the preganglionic neuron of the third nerve is known as the edinger-westphal nucleus seventh is known as the superior salivatory nucleus and ninth is known as the inferior salivatory nucleus these neurons will move out of the brain and will reach the destination third nerve will reach the orbit here it will form the ciliary ganglia and will supply visra of the eyeball seventh nerve has got two destination one is the oral cavity where it will form submandibular ganglia and will supply submandibular gland and the sublingual gland the ninth nerve preganglionic fiber the destination is the infratemporal fossa and the ganglia is known as the otic ganglia and it will supply the salivary gland known as the parotid gland and this trigepalatine ganglia formed by the seventh nerve present in the trigepalatine fossa will supply all remaining visra that is not supplied by these three so these are the four cranial parasympathetic ganglia that supply the visra inside the cranium and now the visra outside the cranium in the rest of the body that is visra present in the thorax and it mainly includes lungs and heart then in the visra present in the abdomen that is the mainly gastrointestinal tract our gut it has got three parts foregut midgut and the hindgut foregut includes esophagus stomach 
and the half duodenum. Midgut includes the rest of duodenum, the jejunum, ileum, cecum, ascending colon, and the two third of the transverse colon. While the hindgut include one third of the transverse colon, the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, and the rectum. Then the viscera present in the pelvis. That is mainly the urinary bladder, the uterus, and other glands. So all these remaining viscera will be supplied by the tenth nerve, vagus nerve, and sacral segment as two, three, and four. The preganglionic neuron from the vagus nerve will move out of the brain and will move out of the cranial region. It will reach the thorax. Here it will synapse with the second neuron, and second neuron will supply the heart and will supply the lungs. And then the vagus nerve will reach the abdomen. In the abdomen, it will synapse with the postganglionic neuron, and postganglionic neuron will supply foregut and will supply the midgut till the two third of the transverse colon. After this, the responsibility, the task, will be completed by the sacral segment S2, S3, and S4. The preganglionic neuron is present in the intermedial lateral horn. From here, it will move out. It will synapse with the postganglionic neuron, and postganglionic neuron will supply hindgut. And the viscera of the pelvis. So this is all about the parasympathetic division of the general visceral efferent component. I have summarized the plan of the parasympathetic fibers. How they supply all the viscera of our body. Now I'll talk about the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system, general visceral efferent component. The outflow of the sympathetic division is known as the thoracolumbar outflow. That means 12 of the spinal cord thoracic segments and 2 of the spinal cord lumbar segments. This makes total of the 14 spinal cord segments. And in all these segments, we have got an extra horn in the gray matter. And this horn is known as the lateral horn or the intermedial lateral horn, IML. In the intermedial lateral horn, we have got the preganglionic neuron. From here, it will emerge and it will travel through the ventral root. Note down, it will not travel through the dorsal root, it will travel through the ventral root. And after this, it will travel through the ventral rami, not the dorsal ramus. After a short distance, it will leave the ventral ramus and it will synapse with the postganglionic neuron. The postganglionic neuron will reach the target. Look at here, we got a cell body with synapse. This is the true ganglia and this true ganglia will be present both sides of the spinal cord segments. In all these segments, on both sides, we will have a ganglia because preganglionic neuron in these segments will emerge, will exit the ventral rami and will synapse with the postganglionic neuron. So we will have ganglia on both sides of these 14 segments. The preganglionic neuron that reaches the ganglia has got four options at this location. This is one of the options that the preganglionic neuron synapses with the postganglionic neuron. Second option for the preganglionic neuron, it reaches the ganglia and without synapsing, it ascends to a higher level and will synapse there. The third option is that the preganglionic neuron reaches the ganglia and without synapsing, it descends downward to a lower level and synapses with the postganglionic neuron there. In this way, we will have ganglia above the level of the spinal cord thoracic segments. Because the preganglionic neuron ascends to a higher level and synapses with the postganglionic neuron at that level. Likewise, we will have ganglia below the level of the lumbar segments. Because the preganglionic neuron descends to a lower level and synapses with the postganglionic neuron there. In this way, we have ganglia on both sides of the vertebral column starting beneath the skull and ending at the tailbone. And you know when these fibers ascend through the ganglia or these fibers descend through the ganglia. They convert this group of ganglia into a chain of the ganglia. And this chain of the ganglia is known as the sympathetic chain. This chain is also known as the paravertebral chain because this is present on both sides of the vertebra. Now coming to the fourth option for the preganglionic neuron, this is totally different. This neuron will not ascend, this will not descend and this will not synapse. It will pass through the ganglia, it will traverse the ganglia and will synapse with the postganglionic neuron 
away from this chain. Note down this preganglionic neuron that moves away from the sympathetic chain of the ganglia, especially named as the splanchnic nerve. I will explain about the splanchnic nerve shortly. Look at here. Now you know that we have got a preganglionic neuron in the intermedial lateral horn of the spinal cord. This neuron moves out of the spinal cord through the ventral root and then through the ventral rami. It exits the ventral rami and it reaches the ganglia. Here it has got four options. Option number one is that it will synapse with the postganglionic neuron here. Option number two is that the preganglionic neuron reaches the ganglia and without synapsing it will ascend in the chain and will synapse with this second neuron at a ganglia of the higher level. The third option for the preganglionic neuron is that it reaches the ganglia and without synapsing it descends in the chain and will synapse with the postganglionic neuron at a ganglia of the lower level. Now coming to the fourth option that a preganglionic neuron coming from the intermediate lateral horn reaches the ganglia and here it will not synapse, it will not ascend in the chain, it will not descend in the chain. It will move out of the ganglia and close to the visera, it will synapse with the postganglionic neuron that will supply the visera. So we will have a second group of the ganglia. One is the sympathetic chain and other is the prevertebral ganglia. Note down this neuron is known as the splanchnic nerve. A preganglionic neuron moving straight towards a visera is known as the splanchnic nerve. And splanchnic nerve will make a ganglia close to the visera inside the abdomen. And these ganglia are known as the prevertebral ganglia, ganglia in front of the vertebra and also known as the collateral ganglia. Here comes a very crucial fact about the splanchnic nerves that some of the splanchnic nerves will move towards the adrenal medulla directly and here they will not have a second neuron, they will just convey message to the cells of the adrenal medulla and cells of adrenal medulla will secrete its secretions into the blood directly. So this is very special case, very special function of the sympathetic nervous system that a preganglionic neuron directly innervate a visera that is the adrenal medulla. Now I'll summarize the targets of the sympathetic nervous system that is visera of the human body. Visera is present inside our cranium, inside our thorax, inside our abdomen and inside our pelvis. The interesting fact, the important fact is that visera is also present in our limbs and in our body wall. The sympathetic nervous system has got four plans to supply the visera of the human body. A plan for visera of cranium, a plan for visera of thorax, a plan for visera of abdomen pelvis and a separate plan for the visera of the abdominal wall and the limbs. I'll describe shortly. But before going further, let's note down how the 14 segments of the spinal cord that are known as the thracolumbar outflow T1 to L2, how these 14 segments will participate in supply of these visras. For the visera of the cranium, the preganglionic neuron is emerging from the spinal cord segment T1 and T2. These two segments are specified to supply the visera of the head and neck. And for visera of the thorax, the spinal cord segments are T2 to T5. For visera of abdomen and pelvis, the segments are T5 to L2. And for visera of the body wall and limbs, all the 14 segments starting from T1 to L2 will participate and will read the visera of the body wall, limbs and perineum. Now I'll talk about the head and neck visera, how it will get the sympathetic innervation. And sympathetic innervation is very much similar to the parasympathetic innervation of the head and neck visera. Actually, it follows that plan. Let me show you. The pre learning neuron that supply the head and neck visera will be present in the segment T1, T2, intermedial lateral horn. So the pre neuron from the intermediate lateral horn will move out in the ganglionic chain and will not synapse here. It will ascend to the superior most ganglia known as the superior cervical ganglia. Note down superior cervical ganglia is important for head and neck visera. Here it will synapse with the post ganglionic neuron and post ganglionic neuron will move towards the target. But how? What is the plan for this neuron to reach the target? That is the cranial parasympathetic ganglia present in various parts of the cranial region. For reaching the target, the post neuron will follow the arteries. This is the common carotid artery. 
we divide into an external carotid artery and an internal carotid artery. The fibers that are destined to read the otic ganglia in the infratemporal fossa will follow the external carotid artery and then the maxillary artery. Then it will read the infratemporal fossa and without synapsing in the ganglia, it will traverse the ganglia and will supply the same visera that will be supplied by the otic ganglia. Likewise, the fiber that want to read the submandibular ganglion will follow the external carotid artery and then through its branch, the facial artery will read the submandibular ganglion and without synapsing, it will traverse this ganglia and will supply the same visera as supplied by the submandibular ganglia. Now the post ganglionic fiber that want to read the pterygopalatine fossa will follow the internal carotid artery and close to the pterygopalatine fossa, it will leave the artery and will approach the ganglion. Where it will not synapse, it will traverse and will supply the same visera as supplied by the trigopalatine ganglia. Likewise, the fibers that are destined to read the ciliary ganglia will follow the internal carotid artery and then its branch, that is the ophthalmic artery, it will approach the ciliary ganglia and without synapsing, it will traverse and will supply the visera, same visera as supplied by the ciliary ganglia. So, I will repeat for supplying the head and neck visera. The preganglionic neuron is present in the spinal cord segment T1 and T2. This neuron reaches the postganglionic neuron that is present in the superior cervical ganglia. And then postganglionic neuron has to reach four cranial parasympathetic ganglia. For this purpose, the postganglionic neuron will follow the arteries, external carotid and external carotid artery. The artery that guides the postganglionic fibers to reach the otic ganglia is known as the maxillary artery. And the artery that guide the fiber to reach the submandibular ganglia is the facial artery. The artery that guides the fiber to reach the pterygopalatine fossa is the internal carotid artery itself. And the artery that guides the fiber to reach the ciliary ganglia is the ophthalmic artery. Now I'll talk about the visera of the thorax, how it gets the sympathetic innervation. For sympathetic innervation, the preganglionic neuron is present in the intermedial lateral horn of spinal cord segment number T2 to T5. Note down this value, this will help you in understanding the cardiac referred pain in my future videos. So we have a pre ganglionic neuron in the intermedial lateral horn. This neuron moves out to the ventral root and then the ventral rami. It exits the ventral rami and synapses with the ganglia here. Likewise on the other side, we will have a ganglia. These ganglia belong to the paravertebral chain. The postganglionic neurons from here will directly move towards the visera of the thorax that is the heart and the lungs. These fibers will directly supply the thoracic visera because thoracic visera is present very close to the thoracic part of the sympathetic chain. So this is the plan for supplying the visera of the thorax. Now I'll talk about the visera that is present inside the abdomen and inside the pelvis. The preganglionic neuron for supplying this visera is present in the Spinal cord segment T5 to L2. In these segments, we have got preganglionic neuron in the lateral horn. From here, the neuron will emerge through the venture root and then the venture rami. Here we have got the paravertebral ganglia, but this neuron will traverse the paravertebral ganglia and move towards the visera. This neuron that directly moves towards the visera is known as the splanchnic nerve. We will get the splanchnic nerves from the thoracic ganglia that traverse the thoracic ganglia and we will get the splanchnic nerve from the lumbar and the sacral ganglia. The thoracic splanchnic nerves will exit the thorax and will move towards the abdomen by crossing the diaphragm. The thoracic splanchnic nerves will reach in front of the vertebra where we have got the abdominal aorta. In front of the abdominal aorta, these splanchnic nerves, the pre neurons, will synapse with the post neuron. So here we will have a set of ganglia known as the prevertebral ganglia or the collateral ganglia and post neuron will supply the visera of the abdomen. But how? What is the plan? Let me show you. In front of the abdominal aorta, we have got the ganglia. The post neuron that want to supply the foregut will follow the artery of the foregut, that is the celiac trunk. And the post neuron that want to supply the midgut will follow the artery of the midgut, that is the superior mesenteric artery. Likewise, the post neurons that want to supply the hindgut will follow the artery of the hindgut that is the inferior mesenteric artery. For supplying the visera of the pelvis, for example uterus and bladder, 
The spiking nerves emerge from the lumbar ganglia and the sacral ganglia. These spiking nerves will move towards the pelvis and there they will form a plexus known as the hypogastric plexus. In the hypogastric plexus, the preglial neuron will synapse with the postglial neuron and postglial neuron will supply the viscera of the pelvis. Now I'll talk about the viscera present in the body wall, limbs and the perineum. In our limbs, body wall and the perineum, mainly we have got the skeletal muscle as an effector and exterior receptor present in the skin. The skeletal muscle and skin will form the major composition of the somatic part of the body. But this somatic part of the body also has got viscera in the form of glands and the smooth muscle. For example, sweat gland, spacious gland and the erector ply muscle present in the skin and the blood vessels that are present in this part of the body are also made up of the smooth muscle. So these are the viscera that must be supplied by the sympathetic fibers. But how? What is the simple plan? Let me demonstrate this plan for you. The sympathetic division preclinic neuron is present in the intermediate lateral horn. From here the neuron will move out to the ventral root and then through the ventral rami. It will exit the ventral rami and will synapse with the postgynglionic neuron forming a ganglia. This is the paravertebral ganglia. The postgynglionic neuron from here will re-enter the spinal nerve and will travel in the dorsal ramus as well as the ventral ramus. Wherever the spinal nerve will move, this rami will go with the spinal nerve and will supply viscera present in the somatic part of the body. These fibers will also travel to the plexus formed by the ventral rami to supply the limbs. These fibers will also travel in these plexus and will be present in all the peripheral nerves that supply the limbs. Here comes a special fact. The neurons of the sympathetic nervous system that travel in the spinal nerves have got special names. The pre neuron is named as the white rami communicantes. While the post neuron is known as the gray rami communicantes. The difference between white rami communicantes and gray rami communicantes is the difference of myelination. The white rami communicantes cell body is present in the central nervous system. Here it is myelinated by the oligodendrocytes. All the neurons present in the CNS are myelinated by the oligodendrocytes. And this post neuron that is present in the peripheral nervous system will be myelinated by the Schwann cells. Schwann cell is going to myelinate all the neurons present in the peripheral nervous system. So white myocommunicanti is myelinated by the oligodendrocyte and gray myocommunicanti is myelinated by the Schwann cells. Look at here, in the intermediate lateral horn of the spinal cord segment number T12L2. These are the 14 segments. Here we have the pre neuron and from here the fibers will travel in all the 31 spinal nerves. From 14 segments the fibers will start and they will travel in all the 31 pair of the spinal nerves and will reach the target that is the viscera of the limbs and the body wall. Let me quickly show you how the fibers from the 14 spinal cord segments access and travel with the 31 pair of the spinal nerves. So in the spinal cord segment T1 to L2, pre neuron will move out of the spinal cord and will reach the ganglion. This neuron is the white rami communicanti. This pre neuron will synapse with the post neuron in the ganglia and post neuron will travel in the spinal nerve. pre neuron will move out of the spinal cord with reach the ganglia. And post neuron that the gray rami communicanti will re-enter the spinal nerve and will move towards the target viscera with the spinal nerve. For the spinal nerves present at the upper level, the pre neuron white rami communicanti will ascend in the chain and will reach the ganglia at a higher level. There it will synapse with the post neuron, the gray rami communicanti and gray rami communicanti will travel in that spinal nerve. Likewise, the pre neuron will descend in the chain and will reach a ganglia at the lower level and the post neuron, the gray rami communicanti then will travel in the spinal nerve to reach the target. In this way, we can say that in the 14 segments of the spinal cord, we have got the white rami communicanti as well as the gray rami communicanti. So this is an important fact note down in the thracolumbar segments, 14 segments, we have got the white rami communicanti as well as the gray rami communicanti. 
but in rest of the spinal nerves at the higher level and at the lower level we have only the cradomic communicantes